Do you want to watch a movie that just makes you smile most of the time, even in scenes that are not action scenes? Well, Spider-Man Far From Home is that movie. It's out now. Let's talk about it in my non-spoiler review. Let's get to it. Spider-Man Far From Home, it's opening up. The summer season is here. My name is James and welcome to Mirror Domains. This is my movie review for Spider-Man Far From Home. Now, this review is going to happen in a couple of parts. I'm just going to talk about my anticipation levels, what I thought about it before I went into it, and then I'm going to give you my initial reaction. And then finally, we'll get down into a bit of a, uh, a more critical breakdown. But don't worry, it's all going to be spoiler free, meaning that I'm not going to talk about any of the plot points or anything big that's going to spoil the movie for you. It's going to be more on the surface stuff, stuff like, hey, there's some really good pacing that doesn't make it feel slow. You know what I mean? That kind of stuff. And I'm going to say stuff like, hey, you know what? Tom Holland did a great job in acting throughout the film. There were certain parts in it that were really well done. That's, that's as about as deep as I'm going to get. I would love to talk some spoilers, but I'm going to keep it spoiler free for this. So let's just get into it. Spider-Man Far From Home. When I first was watching a lot of the trailers for this, and if you are curious about any of those, I'll leave a link to my trailer reactions up in the cards above. But I just gotta say, when I was watching these trailers, I was so happy that Mysterio was the bad guy and Jake Gyllenhaal was playing him because we actually saw that they were paying tribute to the original suit, the costume, the fishbowl. Jake Gyllenhaal as the bad guy is just so phenomenal. I mean, how do you up yourself from Michael Keaton as the vulture from the first Homecoming movie? Because they knocked it out of the park with that one, and Jake Gyllenhaal knocks it out of the park with this one. I mean, he's a stellar actor. You're going to get top quality product and performance out of him. So it's just like, yeah, it's cool. And they do have some nice interactions, Spidey and Mysterio. There's going to be some moments where you're just going to be like, God, ooh, that's so well done. I'm so happy they did that. So, yeah, that's the impressions that I got off of going into this. What else could I tell you? Well, this is set after Avengers Endgame. So, if you don't know what happened in Avengers Endgame, or even Avengers Infinity War, then, you know, they do a little bit of a brief uh, recap of some of the events, but basically what you need to know is about the dusting, and that movie kind of, this movie addresses that. And it's, uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, that's pretty much all you really needed to know. It's it's kind of like the ending chapter of this phase of the Marvel Universe before we fully get into Phase 4. So, yeah, that's pretty much all I knew going in. And I was just so excited. I tried to minimize as much of the uh, TV spots and actual reviews before seeing it because I didn't want a whole lot spoiled to me because there is a whole lot that some people can easily spoil if they're not careful on their words and how they're conveying their excitement. Okay, with that being said, we're talking about excitement. When I was watching this movie, when I was giving my initial impressions of it, there were so many times that I was smiling in this and it wasn't an action scene. It wasn't a scene where you were just like, wow, that's cool. Yeah, there's lots of those. But then there's just funny stuff that's happening with the dialogue, with the characters. MJ is fantastic in this movie and she has some terrific chemistry with Tom Holland, this Zendaya. Just phenomenal. And, uh, but yeah, coming out of it, I was just like, oh, wow. That, that's a summer movie. You're going to want to watch that. That just blew my mind. I feel very satisfied after watching that. That's what you want to feel after watching a Spider-Man movie. It's like, wow, what else could they have possibly done to make that a better film? Not much. Not much. It was a, just a complete package film, and it's just what a great sequel to Spider-Man Homecoming. Spider-Man Far From Home. It's just, yeah, it's one of those movies where you're just like, I want to go watch that again. And you probably will want to because it's just that phenomenal. Okay. Yeah. 
that's about it. That's all I can say for my initial impressions without talking about any specific scenes. It's just the pacing is really well done. But yeah, let's get into a little bit more of a critical analysis. Okay, the acting. The acting, obviously Tom Holland is great. Jake Gyllenhaal is great. That's two great performances right there. And the supporting cast, John Favreau comes in as Happy Hogan. And he's got some really good scenes with uh, May Parker and Marissa Tomei. So, yeah, they, it's just, wow. The supporting cast is all great. Zendaya, Jacob Batalon, I think that's how you pronounce him, his friend, Ned. Uh, yeah, and then all of his classmates that come along. There's some really witty and fun dialogue with all the classmates. That's just, yeah, <laughs> they spent time refining this script and it pays off in spades the directing the directing is fairly well done as i said the acting he handled the actors fairly well this john watts um the only thing i can else tell you that he directed he directed cop car and he uh did direct homecoming so you know that this was good and be in good hands and it's just really whew, really well done man mm. And as far as his technical abilities with handling all the visual effects, they married very well. His handling of the story, there are certain points in it where you're just like, yeah, this is moving fast, but it's okay. You don't feel like you're being rushed in, in any moment. And you don't feel like you're being kind of like dragged at any moment either. There's no moment in this film at all where you're going to be like, just get on with it already. No, there's nothing like that. The visual effects and the action sequences are just really, really well done. The score in this, Michael Giacchino, he did this score. You know, he did the score for Rogue One, I believe. And he did uh, War of the Planet of the Apes, which was one of my favorite scores of that year. So, with that being said, yeah, the, the themes in this are really well done. I just can't champion this enough. <laughs> And the watchability factor. The watchability factor, yeah, as I said, this is something that you'll want to watch right away again immediately because it's just got so many payoffs in this. <sighs> yeah, you want to watch it again. You'll definitely want to own it on Blu-ray. So that's uh, that's where I would go into my score sheet. I'd give it a full two points for watchability factor. There's the score sheet. If you are curious about how any of these work, I'll leave a list in the uh, cards up above a playlist that will explain how I go through these categories. But yeah, it's a fairly solid film. It was really hard for me to think of things to dock this for, to say, yeah, you, know, you know what? You don't want to watch this part because it's not that good. And <laughs> no, there's nothing like that. So with that being said, I gave, yeah, the acting to, and uh, if I had to dock it somewhere, it would be, Maybe a little bit of the directing, maybe a little bit of the story. It's just somewhere in there, some points do have to come off because it's not a perfect film. It's close. It's close, but it's not a perfect film. There are some things about it that I, I figure some people will nitpick at, but that's all you're going to ever get out of this is little nitpicks because I guess you do have to have some familiarity with what's going on in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, the MCU. You do have to know somewhat of what's going on because some of it, yeah, just may not uh, have that deep impact. They did a fairly good job, though, of it, explaining it in the beginning. So, yeah, it's just, it, if you know what the Avengers films were, it only enriches this movie. And uh, I, I just think... Yeah, that, those were the, that's where the points come off. Cinematography and score, I gave a full point. The watchability, I gave a full two points. And adding all that up, that's a 9 out of 10 for Spider-Man Far From Home. It's definitely one of the best movies of the year. Where does it rank on my, uh, on my favorite films of the year? That's something that I'm definitely going to have to tell you. So let's take a look at that right now. There is my top five movies of the year thus far. Where does Spider-Man rank? Well, I gotta say it's gotta be number two, right under Godzilla. So there you go. There's the updated list. Avengers Endgame number one, Spider-Man Far From Home number two, Godzilla King of the Monsters is number three, a foreign movie called Manicarnica is number four, and John Wick three, Parabellum 
rounds it out. Top five. Brightburn is out now. But uh, yeah, this this list evolves as I see them. And uh, that's my top five of the year. It did crack that list. Where did it rank in your guys' top five of the list? Let me know in the comments below. And let's talk about Spider-Man Far From Home because it's going to be a good one. I think it's going to rank in a lot of your top fives of the year. And that's just pretty much all I have to say about it. Oh, what's this? YouTube is recommending a video for you to watch. And you can see my latest one just right there. All right, that's it. My name is James and... <laughs> you're watching Weird Domains. If you've liked what you've seen, please hit that thumbs up button and subscribe.